our third and last subtitle for today is The Fall of Richmond. Now at this point, the South is growing more and more desperate. Uh, they're trying to get a truce with the North with Alexander Stevens, but that's not working. Um, Davis in February actually calls for the emancipation of all Blacks who fight for the Confederacy. This is voted down by the uh, members of the Confederate Congress, but he ignores it and offers it anyway. They're so desperate for soldiers that they're even willing to allow kind of their greatest fear, which is to arm black soldiers. This brings us to the fall of Richmond. Now remember before this, um, Grant has been laying siege to Petersburg as uh, kind of the key to gaining Richmond. So he will finish the Siege of Petersburg and win the Siege of Petersburg and then move on to Richmond itself. In March of 1865, Davis ordered Robert E. Lee to defend their capital, the capital of the Confederacy, Richmond. Lee, however, knew this was impossible and that Richmond itself was indefensible. And so, near the end of March, he retreats. And on April 1st, uh, Jefferson Davis is in church in Richmond. Uh, and he receives a letter from Robert E. Lee telling him that all of the troops have left the city. And uh, onlooker said that his face immediately drained of blood. And he leaves the church and immediately leaves the city. And the city itself falls into chaos and riots. And as the Confederate soldiers are retreating, they burn parts of Richmond behind them. On April 2nd, after a day of this chaos, the mayor of Richmond invites the Union Cavalry, actually a Union Cavalry of black men, uh, to restore order to the city. And that's when they put out the fires. And this contingent is actually led, fun fact, by the grandson of John Quincy Adams. So another Adams president for a momentous occasion. By April 4th, Lincoln has arrived in Richmond and he meets uh, freed blacks on the shore that proclaim him a savior. And he tells them, you will never have to kneel to a son of Adam again. He goes to Davis's office after this, where he finds a bust of John C. Calhoun sitting on Davis's desk. John C. Calhoun, the former champion of South Carolina and defender of slavery. And he turns the bust on its side. But the war is not yet over, even with the fall of Richmond, because Lee is still on the run with the rest of his army. That brings us to the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse. This is pretty close to Richmond. Uh, this is the last major battle of the Civil War, even though some armies will kind of stick around for a while. Uh, this is really the last engagement. Uh, Lee is on the run with 26,000 men, but those men are deserting left, right, and center, and he's only going to be down to a few thousand uh, by April 9th. And he's being chased by the Union cavalry along the way, and Grant himself. So eventually, Lee and Grant meet at Appomattox Courthouse. Uh, Lee does try to make one final stand, but realizes that he's taking such heavy casualties against the much larger Union army, and he's going to have to surrender. And so he does surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. And once the terms of surrender have been hashed out, the Confederates lay down their arms while they're being saluted by Union soldiers, kind of brave men honoring other brave men. So that's the official end of the fighting in the Civil War. We'll talk about the peace terms tomorrow and kind of leading into Reconstruction.